Welcome everyone to the V Book Club podcast. This is a podcast by the makers of V Magazine and V Speaks podcast. I'm here today with Kevin Elliott, who is the director and founder of Redfish Film Festival, um, a new film festival based in Panama City, Florida, and also many other things, many other projects you have going on, Kevin. So we're excited to have you here today. Thank you, Jordan. Like I'm, I've been looking forward to this all week. I'm super pumped to be here. Thank you. Me too. Thanks for coming. I'm so excited because, so we met um, a couple of weeks ago at Bookish Boutique in downtown Panama City and actually had Jenny Kelly, the owner on the podcast. I saw the episode. A few weeks ago. Yep. So that's exciting. I love all these connections that we've got going on mm -hmm. here. Um, so y'all were doing a really cool event there called Red Hot Heat for the summer. Red Hot Heat. Yeah. 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 Tell me a little bit about how that partnership happened. Sure. Well, it started like all the best things in life, I think. It started with somebody going, hey, I have a crazy idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jenny, um, who if you've, if viewers of the show will know Jenny, she's been on. Um, she's a brilliant young entrepreneur in Panama City. And she has uh, one of her ventures is a bookstore downtown. Mm -hmm. It's this great little bookstore called Bookish Boutique. So we've, she stood out immediately in our downtown community because we have a pretty small you know, little town down there, but the entrepreneurs know each other. And so when yeah. she hit the scene, we were like, who are you? What? Wow. You're, in, you know, she's impressive. Mm -hmm. So we made friends. I get a text one day from Jenny on a Saturday and she says, I have a crazy idea. I was like, tell me, <laughs> we love that. tell me, we love it. And she said, I have this friend, Ashley, who she and her husband own a hot sauce brand called mm -hmm. Deadly's Dose Hot Sauce. Mm -hmm. We did a little collab, um, crossover at the bookstore and it went really well. What do you think if Redfish came in and we did a big collab event, something around hot sauce? Okay. That was the text. Yeah. So we've got a film festival and a bookstore and some hot sauce. That's what we started with. Don't seem like they go together right. at all, but you made it work. We did. That's the fun thing about a crazy idea. And the fun thing about collaborating um, is we don't have to know what the end of this thing looks like. We just have to have somebody go... I have an idea, mm -hmm. look at all the parts, and then everybody raise their hand and go, I want to be a part of that. We'll figure out what that looks like. Yeah. And it's exactly what we did. So we talk a lot about with Redfish, this um, <laughs> probably doesn't surprise you. A lot of, uh, of people in our film festival and our foundation are, are like theater kids and band kids and artsy kids from high school. Well, in theater, you learn. In an improv, you learn the yes and approach to theater. Right. Like I, be, I give you a premise and you can't say no. You have to pick it up mm -hmm. and you have to improve upon it. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of our core values is that ideas get better with others. Okay. So Jenny comes to us and she says, I have hot sauce at a bookstore. <laughs> if you guys have a film festival, what do we do? I go, yes. <laughs> and it's summertime. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's hot mm -hmm. and hot sauce and red and we're red and they're a thing. What? And so I'm like, what if we did something around a summer soiree because it's hot? That brings in the hot thing. We're all this nut. She goes, yeah. she goes, great. <laughs> what if they did? This is literally the conversation. So we get we get our folks involved and everybody's now talking in a group thread, and it's like, okay, what if we? hired a chef to come in and do a tasting menu around the hot sauces. Yes. And now we have like a little thought there. We could do it in the bookstore. Um, and then I think my business partner, Lex, chimes in and she goes, yes, <laughs> and we're going to need music, but we're a documentary film festival. She said, what if we had a documentary mm -hmm. of an old jazz concert? This is wonderful documentary. Of a, of a great old jazz concert, what if we set up a screen mm -hmm. and we played that, but the documentary served as our soundtrack for the night. Now it feels like you're in a, having a soiree in a bookstore movie theater with yeah. hot sauce and like, and it starts to roll. And then all you have to do at that point is go, yeah, let's just do that. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> and so we did it. And I'm so happy because I think Jenny invited you, did she not? She did. Yeah, yeah. I was there. It was so much fun. And yeah. it was like so intimate. A lot of people yeah. from the community came out yeah. and- it was just really cool and getting to learn more about, you know, everything that y'all are doing, not just, not just the store or even just one thing or, you know, the hot sauce, but it was like so many different things yeah. that you could learn in that one evening and then so many people to meet. So yeah, it was great. Yeah. I appreciate you coming. <laughs> I mean, we were I mean, really, I was thrilled that you came because I know it's a, you know, drive and, um, 
and things are popping off downtown. But this is kind of what's going on down there, right? In yeah. downtown Panama City is the, yeah, it, ideas are just bubbling right now. There's enough people down there that are doing it's a really fun time to be down there because it's becoming a very normal part of our life for somebody just to go, hey, I got an idea. Right. Let's throw this party and do we, and, you know, so yes, we, we, we are really enjoying ourselves down there. So I'm really glad you came. Yeah. And we love that because our publishing company is the idea boutique. So it's, it all right. ties in together. And I tell you, and in, 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 I've been watching episodes of this, of your podcast and also when, when Lisa hosts, and I know when she started, when she started V magazine, which is a, a very big deal in my life. I love V um, <laughs> is that she started with the premise. How hard can it be? Right. <laughs> yeah. Famous last words, but right. it is still going. Yeah. Um, Alan Branch, who I think, I think yeah. you're going to have on the show. Alan mm -hmm. is a friend and he says, I'm dumb enough to start these things. And then I'm too stubborn to quit. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. And <laughs> yes. And like and we're in this and we're doing, doing. And, yeah. and you know, and it works out and it's so fun Yeah, and you never know what's coming next. And I think that's one of my favorite things about being here. I never know like who I'm going to get to yeah. meet or who I'm going to get to interview. Who's going to be on our next cover. It's an adventurous thing. You're, you're going, on an adventure. So. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. great. And it's not the same thing every day. So yeah. keeps things interesting. And it's been a really cool journey to be on. So tell me about your journey, though. Take me back to the beginning of coming up with Redfish Film Festival and sure. what brought that on. Um, I own a film company. Mm -hmm. So I do... Our company does work for mostly big brands. So we've done work for McDonald's and HCA Hospital and Toyota and we do travel stuff like that. So we, mm -hmm. um, it taught me the film world and just, but more the commercial side of things. Right. That said, um, my business partner especially is a highly creative, uh, just a genius. And so she and I love the documentary form. So we, when we, we do this, we do our commercial work for money and we love it, but we do these side things, these little side documentary projects. And so one of the, one of the first projects we did was of our friends downtown. Like we know a lot of artists right. and we, we knew they would say yes, cause they're our friends. And we just, I would just hit them up and say, can we do a little docu series episode on your painting or uh -huh. on your whatever? And they're like, yeah, whatever, like show up. So we would do that. We go, film one of them well, one of our great businesses downtown that that popped up is called the downtown boxing club yes it, do you if you've seen the i've seen i've seen it and i'm so interested to go try gotta it. go i want to it was the venue in the film festival yeah. last year okay and it's where the idea for the film festival yeah. came from and you said it was packed it was slammed yeah so i owe I, apparently i owe a lot of thanks to the jennifers in my life to jenny <laughs> kelly to jennifer berg who owns okay. the boxing club co-owns it um we did an episode on her boxing gym, uh -huh. on on boxing and stuff like that. When we got done, Jennifer, and if you know her, this will make total sense. She's like, we're not just going to throw this video on Facebook. We're going to make a big deal yeah. out of this. And she said, I want to do a premiere. We're going to have a big screen. We're going to have food. Like, we're going to throw a party in this place and do a big premiere. And I was like, I, I've never done a <laughs> premiere. I don't even know what that is. So we did. She and I planned the premiere. And we didn't, like, downtown had never had anything like this at all. And a movie screen set up in a Quonset hut boxing gym mm -hmm. and a down, like this is weird. Yeah. Yes. And, <laughs> and so we did this and when about a half hour before it started, people started pouring into this thing. And I mean, pouring in and pouring right. in and pouring and it just packed to the rafters. I was standing in the back. The, the film went on I'm standing in the back. I'm looking around and I'm watching these people downtown, watch that film and this energy. And I went, this feels like a film festival. Mm -hmm. I went, wait a minute. I wonder if we could do this in multiple venues. I wonder if the town is ready for a film festival. So the right. so the kernel of the idea hit my brain that night as I watched people watch that film. So thank you, Jennifer, because I would have just put it on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there we go. Yeah. So so downtown, I mean, you know, it is it's been booming a yeah. lot since I would say since Hurricane Michael and sort of revitalizing, rebuilding things, lots of new businesses opening. Mm. How does it just how does it feel? to be down there and be so involved with that and like watching all the creativity that's spawning from it too. I, I fell in love with downtown 37 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I moved here when I was 13 years old. My dad was in the air force and he, um, 
used to drive us around. We would move to a town and he would just drive us around to get our bearings in a place. And I remember I was 13. We drove down Harrison Avenue, which if you know downtown, that's the, that's yep. the main spine, the main artery downtown. It's our main street. Mm -hmm. And we drove and downtown was boarded up and yeah. it was dirty and it was just blighted. But we hit 4th Street and Harrison Avenue and the Martin Theater was mm -hmm. there. And I remember looking at that. And I'm a theater kid. And I remember looking at that theater and I was smitten. I was like, you could see the potential in this town even then. Yep. And I've done plays in the Martin. I've loved that place and I've loved downtown and wanted to see something happen down there for 32 of those 37 years. Mm -hmm. And then it started to happen. And so now over the last five, six years, things were happening before Michael for sure. Yeah. But Hurricane Michael came through and accelerated all of that because it, it sort of wiped the slate clean and lots of the buildings turned over and stuff like that. But I can't uh, imagine waiting for something your most of your life uh -huh. and then actually seeing it happen and what that feels like. It's seismic for us. Like it's life changing. We can't, we walk around with just big smiles on our face. Mm -hmm. It's why we keep throwing all these cool events. Cause we just can't believe yeah. it's happening now. And it is. And, and more and more and more. So it's, it's a great time to be there. Mm -hmm. I understand that totally because I have a very similar experience in my hometown, which is near Florence, Alabama. I know Florence. Very small, you know, kind of same deal, like little downtown that was thriving and then sort of just died off and was not really fun to be around. Yeah. And there were some good restaurants, but nobody was really going down there. And now it's just like creative and there's, yeah. the, you know, there's the Shoals Theater. It was kind of the same thing. Like yep. I did plays in there. I saw movies in there, concerts and I'm it's back when we, too, so. when we used to design towns yeah. with heart and soul, right? I mean, right. you had style. And I think, and I tell you what, I think your generation and the younger ones are doing us a real service like because you all don't want to live in the suburbs and you don't want, you want to have a much more soulful life. You want to live in, you want to be in these little downtown spaces. Right. And, and so I think it's younger people that are really leading the way on this. Yeah. I think it's like, we're, we're looking for connection, mm -hmm. you know, in real life rather than online, but. We have that too, but and then you need to get out of it and yeah. get out and go to these restaurants and bars and shows events. and events. Yes. Yeah. And go see some art. Like yeah. so excited about everything that you've talked about with the Redfish Foundation, yeah. which is your newer venture. So yeah. how did the film festival evolve, evolve into, into that? Yeah. Yes. So the festival has not become the foundation. It's still its own separate entity. Yes. We did Redfish Film Fest and it, and it went better than we thought it was mm -hmm. going to go or we dreamed. It just, it overwhelmed us how well it went. And that's, we worked really, really hard on it. Don't get me wrong. And and, and you all know, you, you work in the mm -hmm. magazine business, like the work it takes to make something beautiful and special right. is unbelievably tough. But it, I, we credit our town and the people who came, they were ready for it. Mm -hmm. They were ready for something like this. And it unleashed something in the town. It just... It, people have told us this. This isn't us making these words up. They've said things like, our town has gone through a very special doorway. We've crossed a threshold. This is a watershed. Like they're using words like that. Okay. And so, we, okay, we're on to something. Yeah. We went, all right, the festival went really well. So we're going to keep doing that. We're planning that. We're in active working on the festival. We want to make it better every year. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen every year. But then we went, oh my goodness, the town is ready for so much more. Yeah. What if we could build, then our brains, so talking about yes and, then our brains <laughs> really went up. We have a whole team of amazing people who have surrounded us and bring all these ideas. And it's, and it's our job to facilitate them. So we were like, what if we did a botanical garden and arboretum downtown? Mm hmm why can't we do that? We did a film festival. Yeah. What if we had a world-class arts museum that had traveling exhibits come through like they have in Kansas City or other places? Mm -hmm. um, and I say Kansas City because I don't want to compare it to New York City, but like Kansas City, you wouldn't expect, but it's got one of the best galleries I've ever seen in my life. Okay. Uh, and a museum. Right. These kinds of big foundational arts things. Mm -hmm. And we said, but that doesn't fit inside a film festival. Right. So what do we do? Yes. And now we need to make this. <laughs> and yes. And now we need to make a foundation because a foundation uh, we've learned because I don't, I don't, we didn't, none of us have done any of this before. So we, the foundation is a nonprofit organization that can be an umbrella and a parent mm -hmm. 
organization to all these other things we want to do in addition to the film festival. So the, the, so the film fest falls under the Redfish Foundation, um, but we have other things planned to include lots of other little pop-up events like Red Hot Heat. That was our first pop-up event with the Redfish Foundation. We, that's why we kind of used it as a PR event yeah. for that, but we have others planned. We have, we have a lot of others okay. planned. Yeah. When's the next one? Okay. So I'm going to say this to you because this is breaking news and I'm not going to like say all the details because I don't want to get in trouble. Okay. I'll just say the Martin Theater, my, you know, my beloved, our beloved Martin Theater is having a groundbreaking ceremony because they are going to renovate it. If you haven't seen the renderings, you need to go look them up. It's going to be a stunner. It's going to knock okay. people out. The groundbreaking ceremony is September, Brittany? 13th, 14th? We'll I find it. Yeah. We'll, we'll find we'll it. put it in the post. The groundbreaking ceremony, the city of Panama City okay. is doing a groundbreaking event around there. And we, Redfish, have something planned in conjunction That's with it. So okay. stay tuned because it's going to come out like probably Soon. this weekend. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. Well, this will be, it should be yeah. out by the time that, you know, this airs. So that'll be perfect. We can help you. I'm really glad you said that because I keep forgetting this thing's going to be post-produced and this is going to be a topic. So we have something coming up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, very perfect. soon. Yep. Amazing. Well, so tell us a little bit about next year's film festival yep. and what you have planned for that. How many, how many documentaries showed during the first one? More than 90. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And those were coming from all over. All over the place. That's crazy. It, this, this thing took on a life of its own. You've heard people say that yeah. and I've never experienced that, but that's exactly what happened. We just watched this thing grow all by itself. And then we just had to stay with it. Right. When we started the film festival, this is real talk. I went to my, my partner in my film company and I said, I want to start a film festival mm -hmm. and she's not involved. This is the, this is a different business altogether. Uh -huh. So I just went to her and I said, Courtney, I want to start a film festival. Um, you and I might have to make like four documentaries this year, just so we have something to show. Yeah. Like literally had that conversation with her and she said, okay, sure. That's where we started. We thought like if we can get enough to fill one day or an afternoon or something, mm -hmm. we can then on a Friday, we can copy paste it onto the Saturday mm -hmm. and we'll have a two day film festival and we won't embarrass ourselves and we can learn Yeah. how we started. As we went along because of these amazing people that, that came alongside us, uh, we we started getting films and i mean we have producer friends around the country this is my film company i met some people that mm -hmm. are in the industry in the larger sense who are from the area who are like from panama city okay some of the biggest producers around are from yeah. this area and people don't know it um they started connecting with us with people so what happened is the film started to roll in and roll in mm -hmm. and roll in and i mean everything from students we got we got more than 20 films from film schools around the country uh-huh um, we had amateurs, like first time people who had, people who'd always, I always wanted to make a documentary and now's my chance. We're like, great, make it. And then we got it. I had a local friend and a librarian named Sarah Burris who emails me one day and she says, Hey, I sit, I sit on a, on a board for PBS oh. for the PBS POV series, which is the longest running independent documentary series in the country. And she said, um, we're having a meeting come up. Would you like me to ask them if they would be involved with Redfish? And I went, are you kidding yeah. me? PBS? <laughs> of course. So she connects us. They they are the nicest people on earth. We get on the phone. With, all of a sudden, I'm talking to somebody at mm -hmm. PBS. And they're like, yeah, just pick from our library. Tell us what you want. Oh, great. I feel so, like that's what you would expect from PBS. Like for them the to best. be really nice people. They're the best. These are the Sesame Street people. They're yeah. awesome. So they were like, yeah. And so we had enough. Then we went, okay, we have enough PBS films to fill an entire venue. Yeah. So all of a sudden in our first year, we have a PBS venue. That's really cool. Crazy. Yeah. Then we got stuff because a friend of mine from Panama City, Rebecca Sermons, who is the director of NASA TV. She had been a producer in LA forever. She goes, would you like some NASA documentaries? Uh -huh. Yes, please. We would like some NASA documentaries. <laughs> so all of a sudden we have NASA. Okay. We got one from that geo. It went like that. Mm -hmm. And then we ended up with 90. Wow. Well. It was nuts. Yeah. It was nuts. Like, yes, and now we need to add another day or two. Yes, and now. So I'm glad you said that because that was a that was part of the feedback we got was we need more time to watch films. And so we've added on a day. We're twenty we're gonna go all day Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday with screenings. Yeah. How many venues are you in? We had five okay. last year. Um we don't have the Martin back because it's it's still right. un, uh, from Hurricane Michael. 
But what I love about that was it made us be creative. It made us be yes and people. We had to go, okay, we want to do it downtown. We knew it had to be in historic downtown. Uh -huh. And we really wanted it to be south from 4th Street south. So if you know downtown, the Panama City Center for the Arts, the Martin Theater, History Class Brewing Company, yeah. that's 4th Street. Mm -hmm. We wanted everything from there down to the water. I wanted okay. it tight. I'm a Disney guy, like mm -hmm. a serious Disney guy. And I've been going for my whole life, yep. Disney World. And I wanted it to feel like the Magic Kingdom at night. Yeah. You, you know that feeling. If you're a Disney person, you get it, right? You're walking down Main Street and you see the castle. Yeah. You're like, I'm here. Made I'm it. here. <laughs> but you also, you know you're here, but you also don't, you, you, you feel very connected. It feels like a great little neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So we went for that. Okay. So we went 4th Street down to the water and we don't have a theater. How do we hold a film festival? So yes, what we we hold it in the boxing club, in the brewery, and you the you should be there, you should in the bookstore. Yeah. Literally, what we did, we went okay. Who do we have with buildings big enough to even hold a screen in people? Uh -huh. We made a list. Who of those people do we know personally? Luckily, we're a small town and we all love each other down there, so we knew them. Mm -hmm. So I could call Jennifer and I could, we could call Judd Manuel at Mosey's because he has a seventy five seat spot yeah. back there. Um, we could call Kim White at the uh, the Gallery of Art. We can call Kenny Red at the Bay County Historical Museum. We can call Jason Kretzer at the Center for the Art. Like just friends. Yeah. And go, we want to throw a film festival. Can you help us? And every one of them were just like, yes, you tell us what you need because this we want to help. So we so we had to get creative with even with our venues. So we threw them in a, in the Center for the Arts, but also in a boxing gym and also right. an art gallery and also a bar. Uh -huh. Like our, one of our favorite venues people had was in the back of Mosey's. And if you know, yeah. it's just like our local dive bar. Right. But that's what makes it so cool. <laughs> and what also brings in so many more people of the community because so many people, and then you're like, Oh, well, I didn't know this place was here. Right. I'm going to come back and do a boxing class or, you know, exactly. so that's exactly what we wanted. Connection. We wanted people to discover downtown and fall in love with the merchants and the businesses and the art down there. Like we love it. So we knew they would come back when it wasn't the festival and have pizza at Mosey's or go shopping at Kim White's gallery or whatever. The, and I'll tell you just a, a, one of my favorite yes and stories about this, because when we had to get creative and we went to Mosey's and we said, can we, Judd, can we have your back room? And he's like, he normally has punk rock bands in there and skaters and like, <laughs> it's just a fun place, but it's not a film festival place. He's like, yeah, sure. Whatever. Then we got a film called Northside Tavern, which was about a blues bar, a famous blues bar in Atlanta called Northside Tavern. Okay. And when we saw that film, we went, that, mm -hmm. that belongs at Mosey's because Mosey's is kind of like a that kind of place. Yeah. And then we went, what if, what if after that film, we threw a blues jam mm -hmm. concert at Mosey's? So I called my friend, Matt Siegel, who's a great musician. I said, hey, man, you want to throw a blues jam at a film festival? And he's like, I'm in, let's do it. <laughs> and he got all the musicians. And so just by being forced into a place we did not, that is not normally for a festival, turned into one of our best venues and our, one of our signature events that people still talk about yeah. to this day because they got a free blues concert out of it. It was right. amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm pumped for the next one. Like you're making me all excited. So. <laughs> oh, can I, can I break some news on this one a little yeah, bit too? Sort of. Please. So we, when we're talking about we, our brand is we are a documentary film festival. So mm -hmm. we are a... Uh, we we don't do scripted films. We don't do that kind of thing. We're uh, nonfiction. <clears throat> so we said, okay, what can we do in year two that ups our that levels up, but stays inside that mission mm -hmm. is is nonfiction storytelling, real stories about real people. Right. And one of us in our team, because we never know quite remember where the ideas come from, they just sort of enter our atmosphere and then they take off. Somebody said, hey. Is it true crime and history podcasting? Isn't that like audio documentaries? And we said, they kind of are. Yeah. And they're like, aren't YouTuber true crime people? Aren't they like documentarians? And we went, they actually are. Mm -hmm. And so we said, what if? We said, well, I'll bet you most true crime people have never been invited to a film festival. Why don't we be the first? Yeah. So we started reaching out to true crime folks. And if you follow true crime... And you know a name like Stephanie Harlow, who has more than 3 million followers across her platform. Uh -huh. She's blowing up. Um, we signed Stephanie Harlow. She's going to be in Panama City. Awesome. So we now do, and we have others we're talking with that we can't announce yet, but we're, we're talking with. So we now want to grab that position of we are the nonfiction film festival in the Southeast United States mm -hmm. to include nonfiction podcasting. So that's our big announcement. We're, we're including podcasting. So you're going to meet true crime pro producers and yeah. podcasters if you come. 
going to be some really fun like yeah. characters, like people to meet too. So it's characters. It's a great way to say that. <laughs> Downtown's full of characters. It's uh -huh. like you're walking through this really fun story book mm -hmm. because the businesses are quirky and the people are quirky and like the and we just folded this into it and did our best to show downtown at its at its best. Mm -hmm. Don't do an event that lays over the top of it. Let downtown shine right. and people will fall in love with it. And they did. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> what so what else has been going on down there lately that, yeah. you know, anything out maybe outside of what you're doing, but anything that you're super excited about? So many okay. So the 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 wonderful thing about downtown right now is that we are in this once in a lifetime spot mm -hmm. where because of Hurricane Michael, um, we can rebuild, literally rebuild our town. Most people don't get to do that. Right. But as we're doing that, we get to almost we get to de define our identity. Mm -hmm. Who do we want to be now? We have a, a blank slate. Who do we want to be? And you know who we've decided we want to be is we want to be an art hub. Yeah. We want to be in this area. We that's our position. We want to be the art district of Bay County. Come down there. And so the things I'm excited about is coming up in November. Um. Every November, Will Thompson throws the Pen uh, the Panama City Songwriters Festival, which is a yeah. singer songwriter like a main. He gets mm -hmm. Brian McKnight is coming mm -hmm. this year. Oh, awesome! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Will brings these people into downtown uh -huh. Panama City. We have a lot of murals popping up everywhere. Yeah. Really fun, quirky murals. Um, our arts community. We have we're starting to have theater just show up, pop up in you know in places downtown. Okay. Um, we have all of these arts are starting to. We have art installations, just people set up random art installations in, a, in an old building or something. Okay. It is, it is the arts district. And, and we've, 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 we've grabbed that because that's who we are. Yeah. And so you can come down there any old time and see all these different art and it's growing and evolving in real time. And so a film festival made even more sense in that context. Where would you want to throw a film festival? You want to throw it in your arts district. Yeah. And so that's who we want to be. <laughs> the arts and social district. So. Yeah, and I know you. They have the yeah. We have a social like, district. You walk events every weekend yeah. going on. Like yeah. pretty much anywhere you go, you can it is. Something. And the businesses are events all by themselves. So if you've been downtown and you've been to some of these, like Bookish Boutique or House of Henry or or El Weirdo and History Class or Thistle and Thorn or I'm gonna uh, Point Break Arcade. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you you yeah, you can <laughs> have a 1980 style legit two story packed to the rafters mm -hmm. 80s arcade pinball the whole bit. Yep. Yeah. Right next to an Irish pub, across the street from a super cool bookshop, down the street from a taco pub that is literally an art installation all by itself. I love that place. Within like two <laughs> blocks of each other. That's what downtown is becoming. It's it's just, it's the anti-urban sprawl. Yep. You know, it, it, it's love this it. cool, organic, quirky thing. It's a reflection of the people that are down there. And there's really special people down there right now. Yeah. And we're going to hear a lot more about that from Alan Branch, who's going to be doing an episode doing next with Lisa on, yeah. on the B speaks podcast. So. so here's the thing. I'm going to, I'm going to plug Alan because Alan's going to get on your show and be like, I'm just Alan from Panama city. I'm right. not, nothing special. <laughs> Alan. Um, and you're going to hear this from other people. Every, he hasn't done it alone. Don't get mm -hmm. me wrong. He'll tell you that. But every moment like this needs a spark plug, like mm -hmm. needs somebody who will jump in and go, I will be the first. Yeah. And then everybody can follow suit and, I think even Alan can't deny that he was that guy. He came down and said, this is my town. I love it. Mm -hmm. And we need to do something different. And I'm going to be the first. Mm -hmm. And we all owe a real debt of gratitude to him and, and his team and everybody um, for opening this all up for us. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I want to go back to theater for a second. Yeah. And just talk to you about oh, it. You, were you a theater kid? I was. <sighs> um, but I, I want to theater know. kid. Just, are you still like, are you still performing very often or? So the last time I performed uh -huh. was in 2003, I think. Okay. So here's the thing. I, theater kid. Mm -hmm. I love theater kids. Um, and I think also too, with the festival and all this, all this yes and stuff, yeah. you, growing up in theater and band, it's an ensemble thing by definition. Mm -hmm. It's a team thing. You have to play off of each other. You need each other. Right. And that teaches us something. Um, I, I'm not a performer. I remember being like 20, I was 26, seven years old, something like that, and doing a play called Tuna Christmas, mm -hmm. you know, the tuna series, yeah. Greater Tuna and Tuna Christmas, at the Martin Theater. Uh -huh. um, I remember standing on stage 
And I knew my lines and I did the show. And I remember thinking, actually, I would rather be directing this than acting in this right now. Okay. I remember having that moment. Mm Mm-hmm. And realizing, nah, you know, I'm not an actor. I'd prefer to. So in my film company, I'm a producer. I don't shoot. I don't know how to edit. I don't do any of that stuff. I manage um, that. And so, no, I haven't done any acting myself, but I adore theater. And I um, I go to it anytime I can. Yeah. And we have a burgeoning. I forgot to mention theater. Shame on me. Right. Our theater community in Panama City, Kaleidoscope Theater is, is back open again. The Martin is going to be renovated in a couple of years. Um uh, Gulf Coast State College has an amazing yeah. theater program. Mm-hmm. Like we have legit arts in this town, um, w- world class, in fact. And you just we have a symphony. Yeah, I mean, do people know Panama City has a symphony? I didn't know that. So I like a real one. They knew. <laughs> yeah, so go to the symphony. You can okay. go to the symphony in Panama City. Florida. Where does the symphony perform? Right now, they are in the Gretchen Wilson Fine Arts Center at Mosley High School, and then they're okay. moving to Bay high school because they just made a new art center that will not be their final home. It's only there because Hurricane Michael, if you know anything about it, it it wrecked our civic center. Mm-hmm. It made just wrecked all of our big spaces. Mm-hmm. So we don't have a lot of big performance spaces, but the town is working on what what is the next version of that look like. So for now, they perform at Gretchen Wilson in I think they may have moved over to Bay High now. Um but in that new facility, but then down the road, we want to, we want to build some great arts center where they can have a proper symphony space yeah. there, but they're, they're first class. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should go to the symphony. Sergey okay. is the conductor. He's, he's fantastic. And then, so what would be if, if you could produce a show or direct a show? Hmm. Like a theater show? Yes. <sighs> what would be your top one? Like, oh, what, what would you want to do? I would want to do a musical. Uh-huh. Because I was a band kid and a music kid. Matter of fact, I started um, college in Florence, Alabama, at the University of North Alabama, oh, okay. in the ba- in the marching band program up there uh-huh. at, at North Alabama. The anyway, other tuna. The other, yeah, the <laughs> other. I would maybe do tuna, um, greater tuna, which is the original. That that was a fun one because if if the listeners don't know, um, that play is has twenty three parts or something, and it's only done by two people, mm-hmm. and so each of you have to divvy up and do eleven or twelve characters. And I think that is a great theater challenge like can you switch characters and and do all that that would be fun to direct mm-hmm. um but i think i would probably want to do a musical musicals are deep in my heart yeah. my my family we all sing and we all play music and so i don't i'm trying to think i don't know which one i would do but i would definitely want to do a musical okay yeah for Click sure on that and let us know that would be kind of great later it? let's do a musical downtown <laughs> okay maybe we'll do yeah, one in the this what if we did one on Harrison Avenue? Who needs a theater? Why don't we do it in the... That'd be cool. Do yes. Know, you do crosswalk theater, like... I'm going to put this into the ether. <laughs> I'm going to put this into the world and put this into your mind, too, because okay. this is... You're, in real time, this is literally how it happens with us, mm-hmm. is we have had this idea from the very beginning that we want to have a great flash mob downtown during okay. Redfish Film Festival. Yeah. I'm a theater guy. What... You know, Hairspray? Yes. Do you remember the movie version of Hairspray where they have the big mm-hmm. dance scene yep. where she's on the garbage truck and the big dance scene in the street? Yep. I'm just putting that out there. That'd be fun. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm in. <laughs> you're in the, you, yeah. you're, you're coming into I've the thing. The flash Isn't movie. it fun Let's though? Go. You all have to be like this at V. I mean, it has to be yeah. a very collaborative sort of like, yeah, it has to be that. Yeah, and I love yeah. how, you know, we can be nimble because we're a small team and we do a lot of different things and we can be like, oh, well, this is really cool. Let's put that in the next issue. Yeah. Or let's try to, you know, partner with this person on something. So How hard can it be? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, and. <laughs> yes, and. Um, but, okay, so another thing that I like to ask everyone on the podcast, because we are the book club podcast, yeah. although we You're jamming me celebrate yeah. storytelling of all kinds and all yeah. people. So um, what is your favorite book? That's a great question. So I am a nonfiction guy mm-hmm. at heart. That's, Could have guessed that. Yeah, I, I just <laughs> always have liked nonfiction. Um, I'll tell you, so the book that that maybe changed me most, or it, it, I guess be my favorite book, is Cosmos by Carl Sagan. Okay. I read that book when I was 19, and it was the first time I read a book where someone of Carl Sagan's intellect and training, because he was a world class, one of the best astronomers in the world, mm-hmm. could explain complex things as if he was sitting here and you talking like you and I are right now. Mm-hmm. He was this amazing explainer of hard things. Yeah. And he also explained, and I, and I read that book and I, 
it did something to me. You know, also, what he said, he, he could explain the way the world worked and, and all that. But this, so I was a teacher at FSU for 10 years. And I've, I've thought about that a lot, like explain hard things to communicate to people with, with a lot of heart, but talk to them about very hard, complicated things. Um, it, it did something to me. It, 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 it changed the way I interacted with people and the way that I try to um, lead groups that I'm a part of mm -hmm. is uh, that sort of very patient, you know, understanding. I don't know. The, 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 it was a it was a watershed book for me. Cosmo. And then I read everything he ever wrote yeah. after that. Yeah. I think that um, we just had something on on our website, mm -hmm. a story about Hall de Lumiere in New York, which is this really cool new projection art yeah. sort of museum that they're doing. They just did a Cosmos show and i want to they? say it was based on that it would have, if they called it yeah, cosmos it was it carl sagan just, yeah and it looked super cool i have to go look this yeah. up because I'll, I'll carl sagan he was he was a guy who had this great fast and I, maybe that's it too now that i'm talking it out um thank you for the therapy session yeah. i appreciate that so <laughs> as i'm talking this out carl sagan he had this wonderful joy and wonder this wistfulness about the world and what you could do in mm -hmm. it um that was Wonderful. I mean, he, he was the anti-scientist. He was this guy who was in love with the world. And let me talk to you about this. And let me explain this to you. Mm -hmm. And that enthusiasm, maybe that's it. Maybe that the, he had this enthusiasm for the world and what he loved, and he wanted to talk to you about it. And so you didn't have to be an astronomer to catch that. And maybe right. that's a little bit of what's going on with all of this. Is it, yeah. We have these things we love. Come, let me explain what we want to do. Mm -hmm. Let me explain this wonder that we have. So yeah, I hadn't thought of it like that. So yeah. thanks for asking it the question. Like that's that's what you're doing. I mean, you know, you're like, let me explain this, how we're gonna do this film festival yeah. and how we're gonna bring more. You want to know this really neat thing, thing about yeah. Venus? Let me tell you this really neat thing about <laughs> Venus. Right, something like yeah. that. There's a little bit to that. Yeah, let me tell you about this neat thing. This you're downtown we have documentary to more approachable for people too. Like I, I'm seeing that because I, I want to come. That. I'm not normally a documentary watcher, but yeah. putting it in that setting, yeah. making it fun, making it a big event is. And having More side fun. events and fun events and creative events around it that you don't have to just sit in a dry thing and watch. It, it, it's a, it's an immersive thing. It's Disney World. Mm -hmm. It's the Magic Kingdom at night. That's what we want. We want this. Okay. Like you can go and do all these things and feel these things and hear these things and smell it. Um, but the hook is documentary films. Mm -hmm. But you, there are so much more to do down there. Um, we have big events every night. We have them through the day. It's because we want people to really, really um, we have some Disney folks on our team, like mm -hmm. serious Disney people. So we have the shorthand we use with each other. If, when you go, when you cross under those gates and go into Disney world, the rest of the world stops existing for the time I'm in Disney world. Yep. It, I don't have to think about it. The world doesn't exist. And they do that intentionally there. They make you, they make the world mm -hmm. disappear. And so in a way, what we want when people come to Redfish is we want the world to disappear for you from fourth street down to the Marina. Just walk in. We got you. <laughs> You're never going to be afraid to go anywhere. You're never going to not know where to go. Mm -hmm. Come down and disappear into this thing for a few days. Yeah. So that's Amazing. what we're trying for. Is there, is it a competition as no. well? Okay. No. Yeah. For that reason, we didn't want that vibe. Right. We just wanted people to come and celebrate. Mm -hmm. Celebrate the town. Celebrate the art form. Celebrate your hard work making a film. Um, so no, at least not yet. I mean, maybe one yeah. day, but but we just, I don't know. Lex and I, my business partner, Lex, she lives in LA, uh -huh. um, but we talk all the time and she's from Panama city, I should mm -hmm. say. But, uh, we just, we talked a lot about that. We're like, ah, I don't think we want that. We don't yeah. want that feeling. We just want people to come right. and have and a good time. Need it, obviously. I mean, people are coming yeah. and yeah. it's making it more approachable again yeah. and more open to all kinds of different submissions. So yeah, super cool. Well, we're excited about it and it's going to be April 24 through 27, 2025. Okay. Awesome. Well, we'll be there and we'll keep promoting and keep sharing everything that you're You've doing. You've got to be there. Thank you so much for stopping by, Kevin, and this great talk. So anything else that you want to share before we head out? I just want to say, and this is a, a very quick thing, and you can cut it if you need to. <laughs> um, and I will say there is a little thread between what um, Redfish and V that you don't know about. And, and I know Lisa doesn't know about because okay. I just met her for the first time today. Um. 13 or 14 years ago, I was undergoing a massive life change. I had was changing career. I went back to graduate school at 36 years old. Um, I had kids and a mortgage and a wife and a, like, it was a very scary, very vulnerable time in my life. But I always knew I wanted to do world-class things, but I, I wanted to do them in Panama City because I love mm -hmm. this place. 
And so somehow, and it might've been as a student at FSU, I saw V Magazine. Mm -hmm. And I picked that magazine up and I looked at it. I'm like, it was, of course, stunned because it's stunning. And, but not as stunned as when I found out this was made locally. Right. Because I saw that, I was like, clearly somebody, that's like Cosmo made in New York City or something like that. <laughs> When I realized that there was this little group of people in 30A who made that magazine, mm -hmm. I, I can't. I went and looked up who did this. I found Lisa. I looked at her cornerstone marketing, and I just I, I researched everything. Of, of, and this is, sounds stalkery, but it's not. I was just so inspired, and impressed because I looked at that magazine. And I looked at the work that you all do, and I went, "Oh, somebody's doing world class work in my neighborhood," mm -hmm. and that means I can. Well, thank you for sharing that because that's amazing, and that's why I'm. And that's real. Too. Yeah. So you know, I came I came down from Alabama to to be part of this as well. So it's pretty great living a creative life, it's isn't it? Great. It's yeah. been a great journey. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again, and we will see you all next time on V Book Club and check out V Speaks podcast as well. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm.